got this bit of spalted ash. It's got some blonde bits in it. It's got some black lines as well, but on the outside it's very, it's very punky. So I'm going to axe down and see what I can get into. Also got some splits coming in from the end here. So this was a this was an end that's been led around for a while. So I'm gonna have to cut it off back to here somewhere. these corners off because they're very punky and then I'll just see what I've got left. Feel, even even using the axe you can feel where it's soft and where it's hard so that is a it's starting to give it a bit of a curl that way so I think this is going to be the bowl this is going to be the handle coming up so let's put a cut in there make a bit of crank I judge the depth by how much of the saw is left so as I end up with a nice parallel cut. Yeah, you see what I mean? And I axe diagonally down to down to those saw cuts. and take the middle out. like that. Now I lay it down onto my axe block and axe, axe diagonally to get to get that lump out. That gives me my crank. Take some weight out of the handle. Take the angles off the back of the handle. And take some weight off the front of the bowl, or off the back of the bowl rather, sorry. Uh, 
and it's starting to look like a spoon. Need to get some lines on there now. I'm following the most interesting grain for the centre. You can see, you can see where the rings go round like that, so I want that to be the centre of the spoon. And again, I've got a little bit of heartwood here, which I'll have to lose. But you can see that the rings of wood go round it nicely, so you can eye it up and see pretty much where the centre line needs to be. It's not an absolutely straight centre line, but you know, it is a centre line as such. And then I can form the spoon around that for the maximum effect. So I don't know, I don't know what we're going to go for really. We're going to go... Ooh. Something like that. Symmetry is overrated. Won't look how made if it's too symmetrical. Ooh, what are we going to do here? If you use uh, whatever's touching the wood as your centre of your pivot, you can you can draw nice lines that way. Just try and gauge equal equal spacings. Yeah, so something like that. So I'm gonna axe off down to this line, down to this line, and the handle, I'll take the ends down to there. That like that. That's so as I can hold on to this end and continue to axe down. But I want to put a saw cut in here and a saw cut in there first. And just take off that and just follow the profile around a little bit. But leave a flat on the end so as it still holds into the cutting block. Like so, I can now judge to take a bit more weight out of the back of the bowl and also the handle because I know where they're going a bit more now. I don't want too much weight out of the back.
Right, we'll put a saw cut here and there. can now axe this bit down to that line and this bit. I have to be very careful. If the axe touches any of this, it's going to split that bowl out. So we don't want that. So as I'm axing it, I'm holding it at an angle and moving the axe away. So it, as it swings, if it goes through and splits this wood, it's not going to touch below this line. It's going to come out of the wood and into the block. For safety reasons we never raise our axe above our fingers so if we keep it below then we can never never chop into those digits that's the theory anyway but I've got a first aid kit ready in just in case because you know, it won't be pretty if you do uh, chop a finger off <laughs> but we don't want that so you see what I mean if I miss that it's always gonna come out through the through the back of the spoon instead of splitting the, the front of the bowl. You have to be careful here because this is getting a bit weaker now and if you put too much force into these axe blows it's going to snap across there. Ask me how I know. So we're actually going to come at an angle and take the front off and then take a wedge off the back. go. Going to take a little bit more off the back of these two corners and I'm going to choke up on the axe grip now so I'm not too far away from the blade. Give me more control and again not lifting the axe above where the fingers are. So by taking some weight out of there makes it easier for me to follow this line. So you can choke right up on on the axe now if you want to give you the ultimate in control but you know as you get better at it you can come farther back down the axe. If you start getting a bit too thick here you can take some more off the back just to give you that control back again. Do the same on this side. You're holding these corners into the block so as it's supported to stop it splitting. And yeah, nearly there. Just going to tidy up this front bit. Take a little bit more weight out of the back first. Just to give us that little bit more control. Then we can do bump cuts. So we hold the axe on there and bump the whole spoon and axe down onto the block. Now 
There we go, that'll do. There we have the makings of a nice sported ash serving spoon. Need to switch on to the draw knife now or you know if I'm out in the woods just start on it with a with a straight knife.